Okay, so we're gonna hook this old six foot brush cutter up to this tractor. You always wanna make sure that the tractor shut off. Don't ever come back here fooling around the PTO with the tractor running. You're gonna make your life a lot easier if you keep everything clean and lubed. So we've got the little dust cover from the factory that has been on that PTO shaft, so it's good. This stuff requires a lot of shaking, but it's really good. Fluid film, a little bit goes a long way. It'll foam up and create kind of a, almost a hard shell. So it doesn't attract as much grit and grime as grease will, but it has good uh, staying power. You'll notice this tractor here, now this is a category one three point, and when you're you know, hooking an implement up, you need to match it to the, the class of three point lift that you have on the back of the tractor. And I'm just gonna put a little fluid film on everything. And that will pay dividends later on. Now this tractor, we just started running it and um, there's still paint on these, the ends of these lift arms. So I need to just kinda get those freed up and moving through whatever method, BAH always something handy to have around. If you don't know what BAH stands for, ask that uncle that your mom never wants you hanging around with, he can tell you. We'll edit some of this out. To just give them the idea. But not reveal what I'm yeah, I am. Okay, so we need to uh, be able to swing our lift arm side to side. All the LS tractors come with these telescopic stabilizers. No more uh, rusty turnbuckles with lock nuts. So these pins will, they'll snap your fingers really good. So we're gonna watch that. Got a handy little holder so you don't lose track of it. Now we can swing these side to side. The other thing that's really nice about this XR and other tractors in, in LS's premium lineup is they have telescopic lower lift arms. This will make life a lot easier hooking up here. We won't have to move the tractor forward and back 15 times to get it in the right spot. I'm going to push it out wide just to get it out of the way. We're going to deal with one side at a time. Technically, you can hook up either side first, but most folks will recommend start with the left side because then you have a height adjustment on the the right side and you notice I started with a lift a little bit low because we can pick it up by hand and move it where we need it and so with that lube on there and this telescopic link able to slide in and out it's a lot easier to get hooked up and I'm going to give it a kick just to get it over there and click one pin in there now for now I'm going to leave these side stabilizers free because after we get it hooked up we're going to take the play out of those and make sure that the mower is centered so now we'll repeat the process on the right hand side so we'll free that up and now that we're pinned on on the left hand side to adjust our height here we'll just crank this guy up your tractor may have a different setup than this but you're going to have some sort of adjustable side link on typically on the right hand side if you want to get really fancy you can replace this with a hydraulic cylinder and plug it into rear remotes which this tractor comes standard with and then you can uh, do all this fiddling with hydraulics rather than having to do it manually and let's see if we can give it a boot there it is pin that guy on now I'm gonna go ahead and hook the PTO shaft up before the top link that third connection point um, is in the way um, we had this clevis on here for tying it down on the trailer and for pulling some stuff with a chain we want to get this out of the way um, as your mower articulates up and down with that drive shaft spinning, you don't want anything back here that could potentially be in the way and, and damage the drive shaft. 
And now here comes the part that everybody hates. And even with a quick hitch system, there's really no good way around this. And you guys are gonna think we set this up in advance, but we didn't. I just got lucky it was lined up and it slid right on there. There's a, a pin here that retracts in and out. And it's very, and you'll also notice this groove around the circumference of the PTO shaft. So when I'm sliding this on, I'm pushing that button in to get that pin out of the way, getting those splines lined up. And um, these modern tractors with hydrostatic transmissions, a lot of them you can't shift into neutral and turn the PTO shaft by hand. But you can usually just by grabbing the yoke on the end of the drive shaft get enough torque on it to start those blades moving a little bit and just get it to rotate slightly until your um, splines line up. So I've got that button depressed and I'm working it, pushing and wiggling. And now I want to make sure that pin is snapped into place so we know that it's secured onto the PTO shaft. Um, if you haven't gone quite far enough and that pin's not locked in place, you can start this thing up and start mowing and spin it up to 540 RPMs. And then the drive shaft will slip off the end of the PTO shaft. And it's going to keep spinning. And it's going to slam around back here and break who knows what. So always make sure that you're, you're locked on securely to the PTO shaft. Now, top link. Different brands of brush cutters. Um, we'll have a little different setup at the top, but one thing that is common among, among any good ones anyway, is that you need to have some, some flex or articulation here. And this top link pin from the factory is a little too short for a lot of implements. LS, are you listening? Longer pins, please. So we're gonna crank this guy out. And, oh, we've got one here already. That will work just fine, thank you very much. And we're not quite there yet. Okay. Okay, so we've got our one, two, three point connection made. Um, we have some more adjustment to do, but uh, in order to do that, I'm going to start the tractor up and move everything onto level ground and we'll show you a proper setup for cutting with this mower on here. Mm -hmm. 